When you said Black Lives Matter, you thought that you were just making a connection to the moment. No, no, no. You're making a commitment. We're married now. Hi, my name is Tiffany Reed. I am the Vice President of Fashion for Bustle. Join me as I investigate what's in store for the future of fashion by highlighting disruptors within the industry who are changing it to be more sustainable and more inclusive. Despite being historically relegated as a feminine or female industry, fashion has had the power to start revolutions. There have arguably been years of grievances from the Black community to what's happening in the fashion industry and how they have historically been left out of the conversation. But what's different about 2020 is that we're now seeing the fashion industry react to it. To be determined how that actually pans out in the long run, is it about amplifying the Black voices or or exploiting the Black name. This is why I want to speak to activist and co-founder of Black Lives Matter Canada, Jenea Khan, about what the fashion industry needs to be doing moving forward and how activism has a role to play in that. Hi, Jenea. Thank you so much for being here with us. Please, please tell me a little bit about yourself. I feel like I'm a pendulum right now. I know that probably so many people feel that way. It's just like at one moment I'm full of inspiration and vigor and then the other I'm sort of, I feel the anxiety that happens when you are living in and surrounded by so many lies. Yep. But I feel very hopeful. I feel always inspired by the work that people are doing against all odds. And, uh, you know, we say, I know that we will win. And because every time we fight, we win. Do you feel like you have been in situations and rooms with in the fashion industry? Does it feel like it's genuine? Or do you feel like there's some sort of people are being opportunistic? The nature of the world that we live in is one of opportunism. I don't expect magazines or platforms to operate uh, differently than the rest of the world operates. People are never more beautiful than when they're doing something that they love. I have gotten to be a part of other people's visions, their own pockets of resistance wherever they are. It has been both the place of anarchism and real change and challenge, gender bending, you know, a celebration of the absurd. What would you say that the fashion industry needs to be doing different or can be doing different? Yeah, so there are big, there are big things uh, that can be done. Um, a big thing would look like a civil rights audit, an internal one. You know, how many people of color are working there? How many women of color, how many black women? We're seeing things right. like, you know, Harper's Bazaar, a powerful black woman now and a, you know, editor in chief. Like we're, so we're seeing these shifts happen. We and love that, Samira. Yes. Samira's great. Right? I used to so, work for Samira a yes. long time ago. Oh. I was, I was an assistant. <laughs> that's so cool, Tiffany, but that's, that's it, right? Uh, we want permanence. When you said Black Lives Matter, you thought that you were just making a connection to the moment. No, no, no. You're making a commitment. We're married now. When I think about that, ivory tower people telling the story is over. We all get to have a voice in a way that we never could before. So I don't think we're going back. You know, I think we have too many tools and there are too many voices and we're just too damn powerful. Over the summer, all of the Black Lives Matter marches have brought a heightened attention because of George Floyd, because of Breonna Taylor. What are your thoughts on how the faces of the victims have been sort of turned into this like merch? I think that we are trying to figure out what feels right. What feels like we're in alignment with integrity? You know, I had a very ugly conversation with my cousin and she was like, I want to be remembered. You know, if my life gets snuffed by some cop, I want everyone to know who I am, or some gun-wielding vigilante. I want everyone to know who I am. I want, I want to be everywhere. So I think that we're going to continue to grapple through the tensions of how to be remembered from the lens of industry. You know, I always want to know, where are the proceeds going? Is it a kind of really gross opportunism that's informed by capitalism? Or is it the kind of opportunism that's informed by courage and change? But who would be in charge for regulating that? I don't think it should be our job to regulate that. These fashion yeah. houses should be upholding that of their own volition on their own. Yeah. Because they said, Black Lives Matter, we deserve more than that. And I don't, and when I say we, I don't just mean Black Lives Matter, I mean people. We deserve more right. than half love, half measures, half resolutions, no. We want the kind of revolution of the spirit that leads to the kind of revolution of this system. And I can't think of a better industry position to do that than fashion. What advice do you give to those experiencing fatigue and feel lost and feel like they're 
you know, fighting and getting nowhere. The time that we're in is such a test and it's exhaustive and it's exhausting, but our job is not to make people see the light. Our job isn't to fight in a way that is performative. Our job is just to be the light. Bigotry, hatred, it requires performance. It requires a kind of flag. Uh, it requires a sigil. Toni Morrison once said evil requires a tuxedo, but goodness doesn't require us to perform. It's not calling for us to be in a dance. All it requires is purpose. And this time that we're in is not gonna be the rest of our lives, the way that the pain that we feel is not the pain that we're gonna feel for the rest of our lives because pain may have brought us all together, but love is what brings us back. Can you imagine yourself in the future, let's say a decade or two from now, what impact would you have liked to have had on that? fashion world. You know, the fashion industry, more than other industries, which is not to say it's radical, but certainly more than other industries, has had more space for gender expression. But what if that was leveraged towards political change in a way that we haven't seen yet? Right now, the legislation that's being introduced to keep trans people out of public spaces is the very same legislation that was used to keep black people out of public spaces in the 60s. All they do is recycle the same kinds of ugliness. So I want to see, I want to be able to say that I helped to push some of our industry leaders and thought leaders in the fashion world towards a more committed political influence. That's not just on politicians and elections, but in a cultural way as well. I think there's two kinds of art. There's the kind that affirms the status quo and the kind that challenges it. What do you foresee to be the future of fashion now that more brands are being reflective of what's happening of the world? I think that the change is inevitable. The way that power is concentrated when it comes to our gaze and what captures our attention. I think if fashion houses refuse to reckon with the power and creativity of young creatives of color, I think that we're going to begin to turn away. And one thing that they need, they absolutely need these fashion houses, they need our attention. And if they want to stay relevant, it's inevitable. And I want to say, then that's inevitable, then we are inevitable. The kinds of creation, creativity that so many people, people of color, black people, indigenous people have been kept out of, can't be kept out anymore. Thank you so much. I appreciate your vulnerability. I appreciate your candidness. Thank you so much for the work you do. Oh, thank, thank you, you for um, sitting here and chatting with me about it. No, of course. I feel very grateful and humbled and um, very appreciative of this time. So thank you. The fashion industry needs to stop being scared to have these honest, candid conversations um, because these conversations will lead to more change. The fashion industry has a lot more work to do. This is a lifelong commitment. It's not something that is for the moment. And we need to continue to push forward and continue to think about what the future of fashion is.